Well, hey, we've got a great, I shouldn't say a great friend. We actually don't know each other all that well, Kale. Uh, however, <laughs> we are good friends. Like we see each other all the time in track meets and it's always, always a blast. So uh, help me welcome Kale McDaniel from Kennesaw State. Kale, thanks for being with us. Excited to be here, man. Can't wait to get talking. Absolutely. So, you know, we've done several interviews here throughout the last couple of months. Uh, all of them have been extremely interesting and valuable. Uh, when I was thinking about you, Kale, it struck me that you became a head college coach, a head Division I college coach at a pretty young age. How old were you when you became a head coach? So I believe I was I was 27, you know, when I first got to, you know, you know, about to turn 28, you know, right when I kind of first got to do everything, you know, and get the nod as a head coach. So it was, uh, yeah, I was I was I was a little green. So, yeah. Okay. Well, good. thank you for admitting that. First of all, <laughs> everybody's like, wait a minute, this guy was ready. Uh, maybe we'll find out. Maybe you weren't necessarily ready in what you had to learn. Uh, but also interesting on top of that is you're a throws coach and there's not a many throws coaches. It seems to be that there's not many throws coaches who are head coaches on top of that. Yeah, no, there, there wasn't, um, you know, but in my time, you know, learning from Danny and, um, you know, being around, you know, obviously some really other good coaches in the Southern Conference. Um, I, I, I just knew I had to start kind of learning some other things. And, you know, I, I tried to pick up as much as I could from any event, you know, or any other part of the job, because uh, I knew I wanted to be a head coach one day. So, you mm. know, I was, I was at cross country practice all the time. Um, it's actually, I think what helped me pull it off, to be honest with you, um, I was able to, right when we started, I had two full-time positions at, uh, when I first got the job. And, um, you know, first time head coach, I went ahead and hired two jumps coaches. That was what I did with my brilliant, <laughs> you know, that was my brilliant strategy. Um, you know, I had, I, I, was doing, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go back and change it for the world. Um, but they were going to coach sprints, hurdles, jumps, multis. We were a very filled event heavy team. Um, you know, we had some, we had a really good relays and, and stuff like that, you know, but, but for the most part, we had a, just a really good field event heavy team so I, I that's what I do with my coaching staff and uh, I had about 25 distance runners looking at me going who's gonna coach us <laughs> and so um, so the throws did man so I was I was the um, I was our head cross country coach as well uh, and that was what I did to make it all work and uh, man built some relationships got to coach some kids and it opened my eyes to a whole nother world outside of just throwing and uh, Again, wouldn't take it back, man. It was awesome. Well, let's take a step back. We're talking about your first head coaching job. You're the head coach now at Kennesaw State. But your first head coaching job was sure. at Western Carolina University. Mm -hmm. uh, something super unique. You were an athlete there, a GA there, an assistant coach there, and then the head coach. This has been like your like – you are Western Carolina University through and through in, at this, in this respect. Yeah, yeah. No, that was – and I even uh, – I was a walk-on in 2006 um, – wasn't very good, you know, like I joked about earlier. I wasn't a very good thrower, um, but that was about the only place I, I knew that would let me walk on that I could actually get into school. So <laughs> I took them on, man. I said, I'm coming. Be ready. And um, <laughs> and I, you know, as soon as I got started, I told my parents, I'm going to Western, baby. And, uh, man, best decision ever. I had a great time there. I loved it there. Um, you know, I knew they had a good men's track program. They were really you – know, started in Southern Conference and um, you know a lot of people from North Georgia know a lot about Western Carolina because it's really just right up the road mm. and, um, it's a it's a lot of fun and it's it's cool and I'm an outdoorsy guy and there was a lot to do there so it just made a lot of sense and um, yeah man one thing led to another and I think over the course of that time I held about 10 different jobs at Western Carolina outside of track I did anything to make it work you know yeah, I, can't, I didn't know. You know first of all, back up. You uh, you're from Georgia originally. I, I, sure. I, I honestly, you're so WCU to me. I thought you were from the Carolinas. That just where I pegged you as from being from. So that's interesting. Uh, didn't know that you also were a walk on. Holy cow, man! Wait a minute. Walk ons aren't supposed to become Division One head track and field coaches. What in the world? Right. right. Yeah. Well, you know, again, it was um, once I kind of made my mind up. That's what I wanted to do. You know, I, I knew, you know, I knew if I just kind of stayed with it, worked really hard, I knew that was coming one day. But, yeah, when you when we look back at it, you know, um, once I became the head coach, came back on it, you know, it was pretty – it's a pretty cool story to tell. And it's, um, 
there's a million small stories, you know, in there along the way, um, you know, from being an adjunct professor to painting, painting hallways and, you know, in the dorm rooms, you know, and everything in between. So, um, yeah, I did everything at Western, you know, at one time or another. And uh, again, though, wouldn't trade, wouldn't trade a moment, man. It was awesome. Well, I think that's the definition of hustle, right? I mean, uh, you got to paint the walls. Okay, paint the walls. I got to be an adjunct professor. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. I got to coach cross country. Oh, okay, fine. I'll coach cross country. <laughs> right. Whatever, whatever to make it work. And I think that's, you know, being young, that was the one thing, you know, I try to share with other people that are, you know, pursuing a head coaching job at a young age is you just got to, you got to be ready to be more flexible and, and grind harder than you ever have. And um, I was totally fine with that. And I have lucky to have a, a great partner and <laughs> great wife that, that was totally fine with that too. So talk to us about, you know, some of us right now are listening, we're assistant coaches and we, we, we dream of being that head coach, or at least maybe we think we want to be a head coach. Uh, talk to us about the emotions of when you, you were promoted to be the head coach. Uh, all of them, maybe obviously there was some excitement, but maybe there was some fear as well. Yeah. I mean, I, again, I knew I knew it's what I wanted to do. Um, I was the interim head coach for, I think, about three months, maybe two and a half, three months. So I actually was, you know, on campus while they were interviewing other candidates. And then I got to go myself. That's awkward. <laughs> uh, they interviewed some great guys, man. And, um, you know, it was, a, it, was a, it was a good job. It was a really good job. And, uh, you know, we were really coming into our own and, and had, well, had been very successful for a while. And so, you know, that was, I went home every day going, I can't wait till I get my shot, you know, because I was watching other people come and interview for a job I wanted, you know, I knew that I could do. And uh, so, yeah, I was a little scared, but at the same time, you know, it was, um, it was one of those things where I just, I, I saw my shot and I knew I couldn't, you know, when it was my chance to go sit in front of you know, the powers that be, you know, this is, this isn't one of those shots you, you, you fumble or miss, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta hit this one out of the park. I, I, I think we just learned something about you, Kale. You know, your statement there was, I couldn't wait for my shot. Like that is competitive, competitiveness 101 right there, right? If you want to be a competitor, you got to compete. You were just chomping at the bit to like, Hey, let me show you my vision for the program. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, it's funny, you know, I, I, I felt that way and, and, you know, was lucky enough to do a good job and get the job. The fear part or the intimidating part, I think, came after. Um, <laughs> time I was, you know, the interim, I never even went into, you know, Danny's old office or <laughs> anything. I kind of I kind of just stayed doing my thing. Um, I acted like it was mine. But as far as to actually, you know, walking in there and sitting down, and then I, I did whenever I got the job, I went in there and moved in and I looked up and there was, uh, you know, I said this in the speech I gave at the Georgia High School Coaches Convention. Um, I was the keynote speaker there, you know, a couple months ago, and, and it was something I brought up then too. Um, you know, I sat down in the office the first time, sat in the chair, looked up, and the entire wall was empty. But there was about 30 or 40, I can't remember, uh, nail uh, holes from all the Coach of the Year plaques Danny took with him when he retired. And uh, I'm like, all right, you know, uh, <laughs> this, I might have, I might have really gotten myself into it here. <laughs> I like that picture Very of a blank, blank wall. I was going to say, I like that picture of a blank wall, and now you get to put your fingerprints on it. Yeah, exactly. It was moving, and I, I said this when I gave that speech. I, you know, the, the uh, custodian at the time, you know, his name was Jim. He came in, and um, I believe it was Jim. Uh, but anyway, he came in and asked me, he said, hey, man, we'll come in and we'll, we'll doctor this up, make it look good for you and everything. And I, I told him, no, I said, man, leave it. Uh, this will, if, if I'm not humbled by this every single day, you know, and so we left the wall as is. And, uh, you know, I, I said, we got to fill it up with, you know, we got to start here and start now. And this will kind of, you know, turning of the page for us. And yeah, man, we left it as is. I had, wow. I had 30 holes in the wall, you know, from all the nails from <laughs> his, you know, his illustrious career. And it, it was a great, it was a great guy to follow. And, was yeah, that was that was a big part of contention for me was just looking up seeing that wall and it every day did you, you how long were you the head coach i had two full years you know two full seasons there at uh, western carolina um and then i was just beginning my third we actually hosted the southern cross the southern cross country championships at, in Cullowee, 
Um, and I think I saw about two weeks later. Did you fill up some of those holes before you, you left? We won five championships. There it is. <laughs> there. Um, that was fun. Um, you know, I think I love what some of these other conferences, I mean, those were coach of the year awards we're talking about the staff of the year, man, because I, you know, they, we had, we had some fun times there at Western. We had, you know, I had two, I only had two guys, but they were killer, man. They did a great job and uh, wouldn't have traded. I mean, one of them's Austin Davis, who's now the jumps coach at Oklahoma. Yeah. Um, and the other one is James Talkington, who's now my associate head coach at Kennesaw. Wow. Is that right? I forget Austin was there. Yeah. Yeah, man. We, we had a moment in time, man. We had a lot of fun. We probably had too much fun. Um, <laughs> so we did a lot of winning and uh, we, we had, we, we took a lot of kids to the regional meet and, um, you know, and, and, and won conference titles and broke school record. I mean, all that great stuff. And, but I think the, the best, how much fun we were having doing it and I'm, how we all were. I mean, it was just every day we were, we were trying to do something new, you know, break some other record, you know, get excited about something. So it was a, it was a really cool, you know, even our athletic trainer was very involved. She was great. I mean, just the whole, that two years, I mean, again, wouldn't change a thing, man. We had, we had a really 2018, 19 were just, you know, or 17, 18, excuse me. They, they were just so much fun. We had such a good time and it ended with 2018. We hosted the last track season. I was there. We hosted, the Southern Conference Championships and won both the men and women's title. Oh, wow. Over, you know, Sanford University, Furman, you know, some of those other really good schools that are in that conference. Um, and we won both. And uh, it ended with all of us just kind of sitting at the track at the end of hosting, you know, coaching and all that, taking a deep breath. And, you know, just one of those really feel good moments, you know, that, you know, you don't get a ton of those in life, but that was definitely a really special one I got to have with a group of people. Yeah, that does sound cool, man. I love that. Uh, you know, a, a regular conference meet is pretty tiring. Hosting the conference meet, you are just exhausted at the end of that. So to be able to celebrate with a couple of trophies and uh, it sounds like a, just a great group of, of coaches and athletes and staff there. It's, that's a great picture, man. I love that. Uh, so being a head coach at 27, and I know you said you want, you always wanted to be that head coach, and so you're probably mentally preparing yourself what it meant to be the head coach. You had a lot of pressure, a lot of stress with this job because you were following a legend. Danny Williamson, been there forever, done a lot, put a lot of holes in those walls, as you said. I like that, that imagery. Uh, it's your alma mater, so it's a place that you care maybe a little bit more about because, again, it's, it's what's on your degree. Um, what things were you – prepared for? What, what, what parts of the job as the head coach did you just slide right in as if you were the head coach for the past 20 years? I think I was, I think I was definitely prepared. A lot of people talk about all the paperwork or the this or the that. I don't think that's ever been a, a huge issue for me. You know, I think if you, once you agree to be a head coach, you know you're going to have a little extra work here and there. Um, that's not been you know, it, it, to me, it was, I, I already had built some really strong relationships with the kids I was coaching, but never that much outside of the team. You know, I, I, I kind of made sure my group was good. And I was a big fan. You know, I was, I was just want to go cheerlead as an assistant. Um, but I didn't know about, another, you know, a kid that jumped on here. I didn't know about their family, what they were doing or where they were from. Uh, then I, I immediately felt this need to just go go figure it out, go get to know my, my people, you know, my, the people that are supporting me, you know, they're the ones going out there going to battle for me. I need to, I need to know who they are, know everything about them. And so a big approach that I kind of knew was coming, um, you know, but it kind of, you know, we had a big team at Western. And uh, so I took it upon myself. You asked my wife, she knows that, how do you know this about every kid, you know, but that was something I always tried to re um, the challenge myself, you know, the team. You know, as a head coach, you got to get to know the team because um, we all want to build a culture. We all want to put our stamp on everything. Uh, but that's hard to do if you don't know everybody <laughs> in the room. So, um, again, I knew them, but really getting to know them and really, you know, diving into who they were as people and athletes and, and then kind of building it from there. You said an important word there, and we were talking earlier before we hit the record button about uh, the interview we had with Judd Logan and culture. You just brought it up there. Is what I heard, and, and you correct me if I'm wrong, for culture as an assistant coach, you're responsible for the culture that the head coach drives down for your event group. But as the head coach, you're responsible for the holistic culture of the whole program. Mm -hmm. So 
taking that on, you know, obviously we won tons of championships. Um, I got a, I think I, I got to be a part of 19 Southern Conference championships in my Jeez. So that was, <laughs> and I was only there for, you know, just under 10. I mean, it was, it was awesome. Um, but so the culture was there. Uh, you know, it was up to me to, you know, keep the ship sailing and, and, and try to push stronger and stronger and stronger. And, um, you know, the, the one thing I loved about it was you talk about having a common goal. Um, you know, there was no doubt in anybody's mind what our goal was every year, and it was to win Southern Conference championships in outdoor track. That was the goal. Um, you could go ask our athletic trainer. You could go ask our academic advisor. You ask every kid on the team. Um, it didn't matter. Everybody knew, you know, knew what the deal was. There was no question in anybody's mind. This is why we're here. Um, something I tried to really push um, when I got to take over was I saw how much potential I thought we had to maybe step even past that. Um, you know, and I think my second year there, I don't remember the exact number, I think we took the most kids that Western's ever had to the first round meet, you know, and oh, our wow. he's been many kids as we can get to the first round meet, better chance we have getting somebody to the national meet. And there just not been many kids make it to the national meet from Western. Um, you know, again, no fault of anybody's. It was just that was the goal was win SoCon titles, baby. That was what we were going to do. And mm -hmm. we're battling with a really, really shorthanded budget. And we were, you know, out there in the mountains. I mean, we had some challenges. And um, so, but Danny did such a good job for so long laying that foundation. Um, my, my goal and, you know, the two years we were there, you know, me and Austin would talk about all the time. How do we get the, this kid to the national meet? That was the conversation we had just really started to get in to have when I was the head coach there. So that was the goal, and that's where we wanted to take it. And we thought, like, we could start getting some more kids, you know, to that next level. Um, you know, but it was always win conference titles, and it, it was no question in anybody's mind. So that one common goal, I think, is the best that I always like to mention about Western because I, I think Danny, he left no doubt in anybody's mind what the goal was, and I think that's, that's huge for culture. Well, I love that you were steeped in that culture because it's not like you came from the outside to become the head coach. You were an athlete, so you were taught that culture. And then as a GA, you started learning how to teach the culture. As an assistant, you were vital to the culture. And now as the head coach, you are driving <laughs> that culture. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's really important. So kind of the inverse question there, uh, what was something when you got promoted to the head coaching job that you just were not prepared for something that you're like, I just, I really had to buckle down to learn this. You know, I think more, you know, managing, managing people. Um, I knew, I think I was pretty good at managing like staff and, and other people and you know having those relate I knew everybody on campus I've been there forever I knew them because you know I went and you know was at a function with them or said hello to them or you know we'd see them out me and mom walking around with the kid you know uh, having a working relationship with everybody was a little more new to me Danny did so much and worked so hard you know taking over a lot of those you know where I'm the liaison to this you know to academics and finance and you know, having all those relationships and also having my own staff, you know, those two people, um, they were young coaches too. And, you know, delegating and learning, you know, what, what is too much to ask somebody to do? We're all tired. We're all doing a lot. You know, what, you know, where do I kind of draw a line? Where do I go do, you know, when am I doing too much? When do I need to maybe take a step back and ask somebody to help me out? And so I think learning how to manage with other people and relationships, that was something that uh, I feel a lot better about now. Um, when I was 27, <laughs> that was, that was, something. I mean, I was, I was certainly, you know, the kids, I think I got a hold of that pretty quick. I made that my mission and um, love those kids, you know, all 90 of them that I had <laughs> every year while I was, but, um, but you know, the, the, the staff and, and the other working relationships, that was very new to me. And that was not something I'd had to do. I was in my thrower world. I was over there and, you know, doing my thing and going home happy every night. <laughs> you know, now I'm, now I'm working with all sorts of, and, and dealing with all sorts of new problems. So that was definitely, I would say, something I was not ready for at that age. Um, then I'm, heck, I'm still working on it. We all are, you know, every day working, you know, working to manage people at a, at a you know, a really high level. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You know, I coached for 10 years and I got out of the game when I was 30. So I think back when I was 27 coaching, I no way, man. No, you know, luckily no one would have hired me as a head coach because I would have just ruined <laughs> that program. <laughs> it was, uh, it was different. It was definitely a challenge. It was a huge experience, though, and it was very.
Well, you know, they say uh, pressure makes diamonds, right? So throw you in the in the frying pan, so to speak, and good things will happen. That's that's awesome. So uh, after a couple of years there, you get the opportunity to kind of come back home, to go back down to Georgia, and you become the head coach of Kennesaw State University. Uh, that had to be hard, leaving your alma mater. I know you're coming back home, but gosh, Western Carolina was your home for years. Yeah, yeah. We had just bought a house. Um, our, you know, our little boy won and uh you know we were we were happy man we were do, we were doing it man we were really having a good time and um my wife had gotten a really good job at the time and you know I always told her I said you know I love western but you know, I always told her I said something in Georgia comes about you know I'm that's I'm a Georgia boy man I, I'm I'm diehard Braves fan and Falcons fan all that and you know all of my has gone to UGA more or less you know so I always um I always knew I wanted to be a little closer and we, we know we wanted more children and everything. So being close to family was always going to be a priority. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I always told my wife, you know, some pops in Georgia, I'm probably going to go for it, you know? And um, when I saw the Kennesaw job, you know, and I started talking to a few people that were, you know, and then some people reached out to me and Nick, um, you know, I came home one day and I was just kind of, it's like, she knew, you know, my wife just knew she goes, um, what's going on, you know? And I said, uh, <laughs> And, uh, she, you know, we, we were talking and she goes, are we leaving? And I said, if I have my way, we are. <laughs> said, you're, you're a good husband. You're like, can't, can we? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, she was, you know, I did all my recruiting calls in the driveway at Western cause we didn't have reception, you know, <laughs> you know, we're just, we're living in the mountain different, you know, it's just a different lifestyle. And so, um, yeah, that was, that was kind of the next time where it was time to, you know, go full steam ahead, but no, it wasn't easy. Um, I took all the kids, you know, after I found out I, after I accepted the position at Kennesaw, I uh, told the cross country kids uh, that I would take them, uh, all the kids I was working with there, um, that I would take them to the regional meet. Uh, I think it was over at Winthrop that year. I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to go with you guys out there, but you need to know I've taken another job. And, and then, um, you know, I, I told the whole team though together and, you know, there was some kids that I got really close with that just walked out, you know, and just, you know, didn't want to hear it. And, uh, you know, my, my, lips, I, I thought they were going <laughs> to, I thought they were going to, you know, I thought I, didn't, I couldn't tell if they're going to beat me up, kidnap me. Well, you know, we had such a good relationship and, uh, but we all, you know, we all, we all do it. But the message I had for them was like, look, I, I get to coach you guys for four years and I get to hopefully see you through some other parts of your life. And I'm always here for you, but I got to coach my little guy for 18 years and, you know, if not longer. And so I've got him that I signed up for. And I, I just felt like, you know, this was too good of an opportunity for my family. And so we, we jumped on it. That's an impactful statement you just made right there that you get to coach other people's kids for four and sometimes five years and maybe longer, you know, if they're blessed enough to go to the professional ranks, but you coach your kids, your dad to get your kids for minimum 18 years, right? Your dad forever, but you know, they're with you yeah. for yeah. 18 years. That's impactful. Cause you know, I think about, I hear this a lot when coaches, um, you know, they'll ask me about, thinking about leaving and boy, I just signed this great recruiting class or, you know, I've got this one kid and, you know, you, everybody's kind of heard there's no good time to leave. There's always going to be kids, you know, that you have um, relationships with. And when you shared your experience there about, you know, some kids being upset and some kids walked out, like I take that as a, a sign of, that's a good sign. I mean, if the kids aren't upset that you're leaving, <laughs> maybe, maybe you uh, should reevaluate what you're doing with your program. So obviously you were doing a good job because the kids were upset. So that's, that's good. That's, that's a positive for you there, Kale. Uh, so what else, what, what kind of transition as you come back home? Um, was there, a, is there a lot of difference between being the head coach at Western Carolina and being the head coach at Kennesaw? Are there are a lot of similarities. What's, what's going on? You know, I think we were similar in that both schools were having a lot of success at the conference level. Um, Kennesaw was even having success. They had a couple All-Americans, you know, and, um, you know, but the, the biggest difference was at Kennesaw, I'm, my title is here. I have four assistant coaches, you know, um, there's just a little more, a little more, you know, resources to be using and to be having. And um, definitely scholarship budget was looking a lot better. <laughs> so again, there's a reason why I made a move. Yeah, I wanted to get to Georgia, but I also wanted a chance to hopefully show what I can do outside of my comfort zone and, and push, push the envelope a little bit. And I felt like Kennesaw was a great vehicle for that. 
And, um, you know, staff before me, like I said, had a lot of successful athletes. And, you know, we've been doing a flashback Friday right now, you know, on Twitter, you know, that uh, Coach Quelo, Coach Rachel, one of my assistants, she's been helping put together with our SID. And it's just, it's outstanding. Some of the people they've had come through this program. And how many years are you there at Kennesaw now? This is, I mean, I was going in through year two. Um, you know, this is my second indoor season. We had just wrapped up and we had a man out at nationals for the hurdles. And, um, you know, but yeah, I, I got there last year. I, my first day was, I think, the beginning of December. It was the first time I met the team. So I, I started really late last year, missed almost the whole preseason. And, um, you know, I think I didn't have any of my staff even getting there until the week of the first track meet, which mm -hmm. was so it was last year was a bit of a roller coaster <laughs> you know it's that's interesting that you came in the middle of the year you know it's one thing when you start at the beginning of the year or even at the end of summer because it's the beginning of the year so there's a lot of intro meetings with ad and you know those kind of things you came in the middle where there's already a whole semester of things that had to have been done budgets are spent and or you know being spent and schedules are set um, what kind of challenge was that coming in halfway through the year, even though the season hadn't started. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, it was, that part was definitely challenging. Um, you know, again, my biggest thing is always get to know the kids, know your people, know who you're working with, know, you know, know, the, know those kids. And, um, you know, I just had a town hall meeting night one, man. I brought them all in and I just shut the door myself and, you know, 60, 65 kids that were on the team at the time. And I said, just fire away, man. Maybe I was the guy you wanted. Maybe I wasn't. You know, I don't know. But uh, I'm here now, and I just left a whole room full of kids. Um, so I and I, you know, now they're in your spot. You know, so you know, help me understand you, and let's get to know each other right now. And and I think I was in there for about an hour with the new team. And um, you know, it was it was there was a lot of questions. <laughs> there was you know, um, you know, but they're you know they're but they're good kids. They're a good team, and I've been so impressed here with a lot of what the culture that had been set because, uh, you know, I have kids that just, they behave like well beyond. They're, they're very mature. They're very well-rounded kids. They, they have a lot of, um, they're, they're very grounded in a lot of ways. And they, they just, you know, with everything that goes on in the world nowadays, you know, to have kids that are very knowledgeable and passionate, but also, you know, again, very well-rounded and, and know, you know, you know, and, and, and talk, they really communicate really well. And, it was just really refreshing to walk into a room and have a lot of kids that they just wanted to have someone to talk to. You know, they had, they had not had a head coach for a while. You know, I got hired so so much later. The process took a while um, before I even came down for an interview. So um, for whatever reason, so you know, they just they really wanted somebody to just be the head coach, and that's what they needed. So that was, you know, day one, man. That's what I tried to do. Well, it seems like you, you were pretty empathetic. You said you had just left, a, you know, the same group, essentially, 18 to 22-year-olds, and telling them you were leaving. Well, that same group that you go to Kennesaw, well, they just had that happen. Uh, so you, you were kind of, you were able to put yourself in their shoes and say, hey, I understand I'm not going to come in and be immediately, we're going to know each other and trust each other. You had to earn that. How did that go? When, when did you think the team was really yours? You're the head coach, but when did it become like the kids were like, okay, this is our leader? Yeah, probably I would say, you know, you know, we went up, you know, my first year here at KSU was also the first year Liberty was in our conference. We had a long tradition of winning. <laughs> you know, Liberty's a whole nother beast. And, um, you know, I was trying to communicate to the kids the whole time. Hey, guys, this ain't, this ain't last year's conference. This ain't, your, <laughs> this ain't your grandma's Atlantic Sun. This is different. Man. You know, and. I said, Liberty is a beast, man. They got 100-some-odd kids. They got funding. They got an indoor facility. They got it all, and good for them, you know. Um, but what I've tried to tell them is, you know, you're, you're in for a fight now, and uh, we've got to bring everything just to be in the ballpark with this team. And so, you know, throughout the indoor season, just getting to know each other, you know, and I would just go sit in the stands during meets um, when I had some free time, and I'm sitting with the sprinters. I'm sitting with the hurdler. I'm sitting with the – it didn't matter. What do you want? You know, I think that we really have to have such a servant mindset in this job, especially as the head coach. And I can't tell how many kids I would talk to, cut up with a little bit, and then it was just, what do you want? What are you looking for? Because um, ultimately, I, I feel like a kid's going to give me their best if they're feeling like, you know, within reason, their needs are being met and the things they need to do to be comfortable, to be happy. 
you know, what, what, what wasn't going on. I, mean, I was literally learning on the fly with this team. And, um, you know, we're sitting in the stands talking in before a race, talking about, hey, you know, when we travel, what's something better? When we do this, what can we do better? What are things y'all want? And knowing how to kind of filter in which kid's giving me a great answer and which kid's just trying to get something, <laughs> you know, and just kind of working through that. And um, that also helped me kind of pick my staff because I was really doing it. I inherited some of the former staff. And then we also, you know, I knew a lot of them. We had a good, you know, we worked together and we made it work. And then, but I was also trying to bring in some of my people too. And so talking to those kids really helped me kind of go pick exactly who I wanted to bring in to kind of help me do this thing here at Kennesaw. You know, there's lots of different styles of leadership and therefore of being a head coach. Uh, and if you think leadership is important, specifically around track coaches, go back and listen to the episode where we interviewed Todd Gongler. He's the author of Lead for God's Sake. He was also our keynote speaker at, I think it was 2018, USTF CCCA convention. Uh, but just a great lesson in leadership. You mentioned being a servant leader. Uh, I, I happen to... This, this is not planned. We did not agree. We did not know that this was going to be set up. That's what I think is a leader as well as someone who's a servant leader. But we we learn our styles of leadership through examples of others. Where did that come from? You is that something from your growing up? Is that a head coach you had? Where did that come from? Yeah, a little bit. You know, my dad was a lifelong administrator in education. My whole family's in education. Um, my wife was a teacher for seven years, but everybody in my extended family, everybody's an educator. And my dad mostly was, you know, longtime principal. And then he finished up his career as assistant superintendent with student services and mm -hmm. driving around the county, putting out fires, man, helping people, doing whatever he could to, you know, right, right any wrongs, fix anything. He's a fixer. And so took a lot from him on that side. And then, you know, spending that much time with Danny Williamson, you know, he would be the first to tell you he didn't know everything about track and field, um, but he'd also be the first person to literally work his fingers to the bone to make it happen, to make whatever. And, and he would always say, you know, we're doing it, A, because, you know, we want to win and we're doing it for the kids. You know, those are, that was in his mind, you know, taking care of the people we've asked to be on this team. He'd always say, guys, this ain't the NBA. We can't go make a trade. The kids we got are the kids we got. You know, we asked them to come here. Um, what are we going to do to make it work? What are we going to do to make it work? And it usually came down to just working our ass off, man. And um, I learned that from him big time. And we shoveled off the track full of snow. You know, we were out there mowing the cross country course, you know, and, and so I mean, we're recruiting, you know, we'd work all day and then we'd sit in the office and make recruiting calls together or, you know, on the couch, you know, and, and just whatever we needed to do, you know, we, he was ready to do. So I just, that was the only thing I'd been really taught and that I saw it. He mastered that, you know, whatever, whatever working your ass off really is, if there's another word for it, I'll take it. But that's the only way I know to explain it. You know, Danny, um, I had to tell him all the time. And now I tell him all the time, you know, cause now we're colleagues even more so, and he's the head coach still. And, you know, he's telling me, oh, I, you know, I had a, you know, has a broke foot or he's got this or he's got that. It's just cause he won't slow down, man. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, but the dude just works in unbelievably hard. So I would say I learned that servant, servant, hardworking thing. Absolutely learned that from, you know, a lot from my family and then a lot from that extension of my family, which was Danny. Um, can't say enough about how hard he worked for other people to make things work for other people. I like that. You know, we're an amalgamation of the people we surround ourselves with. So from your dad and the rest of your family, even your wife as a teacher and just, a, you know, servant posture. Uh, and then Danny, it just reinforcing that, like, it was meant to be for you to go to Western Carolina is kind of what I'm picking up here uh, to work with. Oh, Danny. yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. There was never any doubt in my mind that that was the place I was supposed to be at. That's awesome, man. We get, it's, it's rare when it all lines up like that. So it's, it's just pumped to hear that it did line up like that. So with, as a head coach, you know, there's a lot of things you got to do. There's meetings, there's compliance, budgeting. I mean, you're running your own business here. And part of that business is staff. Uh, I actually, shame on me, I don't know much about your staff at Kennesaw State, except for you guys get results. <laughs> uh, talk to us about your staff and who you got and how'd you get them? <laughs> yeah, man. So uh, first, first I brought in, you know, the whole time and he had an opportunity, you know, um, you know, it's being considered to just take my place at Western. Um, but Austin, 
originally Austin Davis had just left Western right before I left, and he got a head coaching job at UNC Wilmington. And I told him, man, you're, you go be a head coach. You got to go be a head coach, dude. You know, do it. And uh, so he was gone. And, and then um, so then when I left, you know, Coach Talkington, James Talkington, who's another young guy, a couple years younger than me, he had come to us from Marshall University originally to Western. Um, and he's just all around really good jumps coach. Um, never, ne I mean, the dude, I don't think he's ever told me no. And I, I ask him to tell me no sometimes. I'm like, dude, please tell me. Not easy, yes, man. He's just he's willing to do whatever we need to do to make it work, and he's great. He's absolutely great, and <clears throat> I, I just made it. You know, he's my guy. You know, I think in this profession, a lot of us have a guy. You know, a lot of us have that person that we really trust and we really want to work with. And so James was a no-brainer, man. I said, "You're coming with me, dude. I'm going to Kennesaw. You're coming with me." And uh, Western Nebraska. So Atlanta is very you know new to him. <laughs> That's different. But he's involved, and we're having a good time. And he's our jumps coach. He's my associate. Head and then uh, next was uh, Coach Bray. Um, man, that was uh, just – that was written in the stars too. He was at Pittsburgh for a long time, and his his network is huge, man. He knows so many people. And uh, he's a little bit older than me and James, but um, his fiance is – she got a job at a practice. She's in the medical field. And uh, he had left Pittsburgh um, in good graces and everything, but he, he decided – I don't believe they're engaged yet, but – you know, he was, he was working his way down here with her. She got a job in Atlanta. And he had been at Pittsburgh for eight years. So he's, this dude's a head cross-country coach in the ACC. And he just is in Atlanta looking for a job in the middle of the year. Like, what are the odds? Yeah. I knew him through Chip Brundage, who's one of my good friends. Um, they worked at Pitt together for a while. So Chip calls me. He's like, hey, man, I got your guy. Just call. I'm like, okay, Chip. You know, and I just went on a – not too long ago, went on a fishing trip with Chip, and we had actually talked about it and everything. So, anyway, long story short, man, I, I get up with Adam, uh, Adam Bray, and we get together, and we met at an Applebee's, like, my third or fourth day of work at Kennesaw. And uh, we tried to meet another place and got our wires crossed. And he was living in Midtown, or Buckhead in Georgia. So, he drives up to meet me. He's volunteering at Georgia Tech just to kind of, keep, you know, stay, stay in the business, you know. And he's like, I figured something would pop, you know. Um, and then here you go, he's, you know, you know, halfway, you know, through the first semester, and here I am, you know, or in December, and uh, we met at Applebee's, there was nobody in there, it was like 9, 10 o'clock at night, just interviewed him right there on the spot, <laughs> we had a, we had, I don't, I think they asked us to leave at one point, because we were sitting there, having a beer, talking, and man, we connected, boom, like that, and, um, you know, he never got a ton of uh, scholarship money to work with, you know, his past, so, he told me, he's like, man, you know, I can, I feel like, you know, if we can breathe some life. And that was a part of the program that there wasn't a lot of money. It wasn't a lot of resources when I got to KSU. And I'm a big believer in balance. And, and uh, I love the throws, but we need everything, you know, to be a great team. And uh, I'm just, I'm one of those guys. I want a holistic team for sure. And uh, so I knew I wanted to get somebody that could develop and run a really high end distance program. And Adam Bray sitting here falling into my lap and, so we tell people all the time about our fun night at Applebee's. And, uh, you know, I think I offered him the job, of, you know, the next day at like 10 a.m. So <laughs> The old Applebee's interview. <laughs> yeah, you got to love it, man. So um, anyway, he's, um, he came in right away and just, I think we got third this year in the A-Sun and cross country. And that was our highest finish since they've been Division One in the conference, I believe. Um, so we're working our way up the ladder. And then uh, we had, a, you know, a couple other girls. We had a young lady, a freshman, run 206 in the 800, and, you know, that he brought on. She was like a 217 girl in high school, you know, so just in her first year. And then now I'm also starting to see just the camaraderie he's building in his group. And it's on the men and women's side. He's just doing an outstanding job. Um, and then lastly, we got uh, Coach Coach Rachel uh, Coelho, who uh, came to us. Uh, she's a South Florida alum. Uh, and she was a high school coach for, I believe, three years. And, um, and anyway, she came, she came over. She was volunteering for Dana Boone. Um, so I had another opening come open this summer. I knew, you know, we really were, you're hoping to find, you know, someone that was multi-event driven because that's been, at Kennesaw, that's been the big thing is these multi-eventers. You know, that was always the big thing. We had some good ones returning. We had some more recruits that we were looking at in the multi. So wanted to do that. And we got to, I got to talk to her and, Man, I, I don't know Dana Boone super great, but I've always heard so many great things about her. And I know she doesn't mess around, man. So I just, I know she don't play, man. So I, I was like, man, this, 
this woman's a volunteer for Dana and she's falling around everywhere. She's learning from her for, from a whole, for a whole year. She's learning from her. And, um, you know, again, friend of a friend thing, you know, we knew a couple other people in UCF. Um, and she was volunteering there at UCF and I just went up to her. We started talking actually at the national championships, maybe a little later last year and said, Hey, I might have something come open. And we kept talking, kept some dialogue going and man, she's come in and just been a rock star. She's been awesome. Um, She's another young coach, um, but she's doing a really, really good job. And one of her guys was at the NCAA meet in the hurdles this year. He ran 772, I believe. So, you know, she's – that was a big PB for him. So, yeah. So, and then lastly, we have uh, Coach Dennis Martin, who's a University of Florida alum, ran, ran for mouse and everything, and he was a hurdler. Uh, he was up at Tiffin University. You know, they've obviously got a great program. So, all in all, man, just looking for good people, looking for um, – you know, people that came with a championship pedigree or at least, you know, have been around some really good people that I trust. And, you know, we were able to put together a really cool staff and a lot of different networks kind of coming together. And uh, so, yeah, so Rachel, Dennis, Adam, and James, man, and, and that's us. We're, we're, we're a fun group. That sounds like a, uh, some kind of new uh, boy band, new hip-hop band there, <laughs> Rachel, Dennis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good time. I, I, I give them I'm, – I'm real bad at calling them all by their first name. They all go, you know, go by coach, last name, you know, and then I'm just, I'm, I'm a first name guy always, you know, I'm, so I'm trying to get better about that, but I, <laughs> I always call them, yeah, I always talk to them like that, and, uh, but they're a fun group, man, it's a lot of energy, a lot of, you know, a lot of fun, young, energetic people that are coming from good backgrounds. I love how they, the staff came together because of connection. You know, there's a, a real specific reason why we named the podcast Connections. Uh, you know, you right. are who you are based on who's around you and who is in the next circle and the next circle. Uh, so I love that, you know, guys like Chip Brundage, who I've known for a long time now, I got to get him on the podcast just to talk about fishing. <laughs> you have to. You have to. One of my best friends, man. I love that guy. I love that guy. Absolutely. I, I have been on a fishing trip as well with him. So I'm, I'm in that club. <laughs> Uh, for that one. Uh, and then I would co-sign Dana Boone. If she says someone is, is good, th then they're good because she right. is one of the hardest working, smartest people I know uh, out there. In fact, she was one of my last visits that I got to have a, a meeting with before nationals and yeah. the coronavirus. Yeah, I was down there for some other show, but uh, love her to death. That's awesome. Uh, well, let's have some fun here. You're a throws coach. Um, full disclosure, I'm not. <laughs> I was a sprint jumps and hurdles coach, uh, but never coached shot put. Uh, I actually did try, Kale, you'll laugh. When I was the head coach of the junior college in Kansas, Neosho County, we didn't have a throws coach. And I was trying to teach this guy. We had, he had come in, he was a shot putter. I was trying to teach him how to throw the weight. And, you know, I look back now, now that I know a little bit more about it, I'm, I'm just kind of embarrassed on what I was <laughs> teach I, I can't even say teaching him what how i was torturing him to try to throw the weight throw it was it was just absolutely terrible um but you know it's always fascinated me we were talking about this before we hit the record button the hammer has always been one of my favorite track and field events every coaching stop i had through my career i always went early uh, for my practice i always went early to watch the hammer practice uh it meets i love going to the hammer it's just a it's really kind of an art form more than it is a throwing event but throws coaches are always, you know, kind of unique to me. And I know everybody who knows a throws coach right now is shaking their head going, oh, yeah, they're unique. All right, Mike. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, you coach the shot put, which has some similarities to the discus, but that's a pretty different event. Uh, and then you kind of have some similarities to hammer, but that's a radically different event. Uh, the weight throw is not the hammer, so that's not the same event. Some uh, non-throws coaches sometimes think, well, if you can coach the hammer, you can coach the weight throw. If you're good at the hammer, you can be good at the weight throw. Uh, and then you throw in the X factor, uh, also one of the best throwing events, I think. Uh, my teammate is a pretty good 80 meter plus javelin thrower, so in case he hears me, I got to make sure I, I give props to the <laughs> javelin on top get the of plug that. in there. Yeah. Exactly. How do you? And again, I know there's some commonalities and in, in, uh, some athletes are doing more than one, obviously, but how do you handle coaching five fairly radically different events? Well, I definitely, you know, again, kind of coming up a little bit through the Mike Judge school and, and also, you know, learning a lot on my own as a young coach. I got thrown, you know, again, right off the bat as in a GA, I was coaching the throws group. There was no one else there. And, um, you know, we've really tried to use – 
use them to complement one another. And, um, you know, that's something that, you know, I think a lot of coaches that are doing it at a high level, you know, still have, you know, a great shot putter, still have, you know, um, you know, separation, hip shoulder displacement, separation, separation, no matter, how, you know, no matter what the event is. So, you know, if that's what we're teaching, you know, we'll have, you know, I have a guy that's a 1840 shot putter. He never even really threw weight or hammer. And, you know, now I've got him throw weight and hammer. And, you know, he was only a 15 meter shot putter when I took him over at Kennesaw. Now he's a 18 plus guy. And, uh, you know, but the biggest thing I think we do is, you know, I think it just makes a more well-rounded thrower to throw hammer and weight. I'm just a big believer in that. Um, both of them, I think it's good for them to throw. Uh, now, do we spend a ton of time on it if they're mainly shot putter? No, but we do do it. And a lot of times that's part of kind of our shot put practices. We'll take some of our bigger shot put guys. You know, we have a couple guys over 60 feet this year. They were throwing weight before they threw shot on their shot days. And, um, you know, it might be six to eight throws and then we take a break and then we start shot practice. But, you know, I, I like to teach separation and the, the kind of the feeling of separation um, by teaching weight and hammer. And so that's always something I've really been into. Um, and then, you know, was I, is that right? Is that something different? Not everybody believes that, but, um, but then I got down here and all our post collegians that, that, that Mike works with, I get to work with some, they're all, that's what he's doing with all of them. They're all throwing weight. And I'm going, whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't know this guy threw weight. He's like, well, he doesn't accept it. <laughs> so I blend them. I try to help them help each other. And, you know, uh, if that makes sense. And, and we try to do our best. Um, you know, ultimately when they're young, you know, we try to develop kids across the board. I went, I went to college thing. I was going to be a discus thrower. You know, when I left, I might have been the worst discus thrower in the country. So, <laughs> you know, um, but I ended up throwing the hammer 190, 191 feet, something like that, which is nothing great, but it was heck of a lot better than my 40 meter discus throw, you know, <laughs> so, um, you know, it's just one of those things where you never know how a kid's going to develop, you know, especially when we're in that development. You know, when I sign a kid that threw 68, 70 feet in the shot out of high school, we, we know what he's going to be. But so many of the kids that we throw, you know, fire, they're learning the hammer for the first time. They might end up being elite, you know. So we just try to really, really develop at a young age. And then, uh, and then you know, once they get older, once we kind of know what they're doing, junior, senior year, we might specialize a little more. Um, you know, but every day is, every day is, you know, we have a plan for sure. And we have our whole yearly plan written out. We have our daily plans written out, but I'd be lying if I'd say we don't go a little off script to make things work day to day with certain kids. Well, you said you, you know, you try to work with them when they're young and I'm imagining you're, cause you're, you're a college coach. You're talking about freshman year. At first and sophomore year, we're still throwing pretty much everything. We're trying to split time as much as we can in the junior senior year, just the way I've done it. We'll, okay, dude, you're a shot putter. <laughs> you know? And then we, we might hang, we might go hang up the discus weight or vice versa, you know, whatever the case may be. Uh, unlike the other event coaches, you know, a sprint coach, when he or she recruits a sprinter, well, they did it in high school. They ran the 100 and 200. Maybe they have to make them a 400 meter runner and they never ran the 400. Uh, you know, a hurdles coach, uh, specifically on the men's side, has to coach from a 39 to a 42 inch or the 300 hurdles to 400 hurdles. <laughs> Uh, taking away the um, special thing that you do have in the Georgia area, the, the throw one deep club of Mike Judge, take that aside for a second. Uh, every javelin thrower and hammer thrower, and when I say every 99%, I know, you, you know, Rhode Island and things like that, but 99% of the hammer thrower and javelin throwers in this country for college are learning it brand new as an 18 year old. They've never touched, they, they all, air quotes, right, through shot and discus but no one touched a hammer or a javelin. What, that just has to add, so it like kind of blows my mind, like how much complexity that adds, trying to teach that to an 18 year old that's maybe seen it. Some of them haven't even seen the, the, the event. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it can be a challenge for sure. And the, the crazy part, probably one of my most exciting times when I get a walk on who they probably don't even know. I mean, I'm telling them, you know, when I'm, you know, walk on or kid I got to come on just to, Maybe they're a pretty good shot discus kid, but I'm thinking hammer and weight the whole way. And they don't, they've never even seen one before. <laughs> you know, we're going, all right, just trust me. You're going to be good at this. Just, just trust me, you know, and it's so different than anything they've ever done. And, you know, if they haven't done anything that's rhythmic oriented, um, you know, it can just be so, 
so different. And uh, so it's, it's fun to teach. It's fun to coach. And it's really fun to start seeing that light bulb go off. Cause I think about a year, you know, maybe not even a year, maybe, you know, half a year or a year in, you start realizing this person is a hammer thrower. Like they get it. They get how to move this ball. They get how to counter the ball. And here we go. You know, this is going to be fun. And, and then there's some kids that, you know, again, same thing. Maybe they don't, maybe they're just a shot disc person that, and that's okay too. Um, but it is fun to kind of see that light bulb go off and, um, you know, getting to be, you know, getting to go to those camps and stuff, help them work Mike's camp and, you know, things, you know, whenever you see a kid pick one up for the first time, you know, and a college coach is sitting there helping them out. And then all of a sudden they, they do something right. And it's just their face lights up. And they're like, Oh, there's something else I might be able to be good at. You know, this is great. And, uh, so it's a fun event. I enjoy it. Same thing with Javelin. I mean, most of our guys at Western were just guys that got cut from the baseball team. <laughs> you know? And we're just, we're bringing them over there. And, you know, other guys, our, our school record holder at Western was a 6'4 high jumper that walked on. He was, he was my teammate. We came to Western together, ended up throwing a little over 66 meters, you know, which is, again, nothing crazy, but pretty good for a 6'4 walk-on high jumper. <laughs> One of my favorite story, the hammer is like I said, has always been my favorite because I've seen just so many different body types successful, like like achieve success in it. When I was at Ball State University, when I got there, they had a I inherited this walk on long jumper, and it just you know was clearly not going to happen in the long jump in the MAC. And my roommate, our GA, one of my good friends, used to be the head coach at UNCW. <laughs> Austin took his job, actually. Okay. Um, my buddy Lane Schwer, who's like a brother to me, uh, I said, hey, why don't you teach her the hammer? Like, she'll probably be pretty good. You know, we're in the MAC, though. And, you know, the MAC's a pretty good throws conference, pretty good conference, yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty good throws conference. For sure. And by her senior year... So three years later, she did her freshman year with me as, as a, a terrible long jump coach and then went over to her. Uh, she scored, she was eighth place her senior year in the hammer, in the MAC. Wow. <laughs> I mean, wow. uh, and, and she just, I remember the first day we were, you know, we're over there, we had the concrete slab and he just starts teaching her the footwork. You know, there's, it, it seems like you just twist around, <laughs> but you know, there's an actual footwork to it. And, you know, she started kind of getting it and it was kind of like, oh, maybe she'll, you know, she'll at least achieve success for her. Like she'll be able to walk away from college going, okay, I learned a new event, had fun and contributed to the team. And lo and behold, she ends up scoring. I mean, I just love the hammer for that. I've seen kids that look like the, the, the high jumper you talked about at West Carolina. I've seen yeah. kids that are like, oh yeah, this kid's a high jumper. What are they doing throwing? Uh, yeah. uh, it's just amazing event that if you work at it and have the right coach to understand the physics of it, it's, it's really magical. Yeah, it's it's a cool one. I enjoy it. I enjoy the hammer and the weight. I'm not just a, I'm not a hammer homer, man. I love the weight too. I, I'm not afraid to say that. I love the. Um, I don't I don't think it messes up a throw. I think there's ways to train around that, and I, I like I like the weight throw a lot, you know. And now you know, having Daniel still training here, you know, watching him throw weight, you know, he's a former USA champion, got second, got runner up this year. Um, you know, that was a great competition. Bunch of guys throwing over 80 feet. I mean, it's just crazy. So it's. Now that I'm getting to see one go that far on a regular basis, now I really, I really like it now. <laughs> I don't think I really appreciated the the indoor weight. You know, it was cool because you see it, you know, but it, and it goes 70, 80 feet, and it's like, oh, okay. Uh, and I knew it weighed 35 pounds, you, you know, and I'm sure I picked one up as a, a sprint coach. I probably, you know, screwed around and picked one up. But when I first got to Gill and, A, saw how to make them and then, you know, actually handled them a lot, and then I started seeing them throw – 80 feet bombs and stuff. It was like, oh yeah, this, this is a pretty cool event. I mean, it, literally it's bombs. It's freaking 20 pounds and 35 pounds flying. Yeah, it's awesome, man. I love the weight. So much fun. Well, that's about as much that I feel like I can uh, talk to a throws a high level throws coach. <laughs> uh, you, anything else is just going to be over my head. Uh, but, and I do know, you know, you're the head coach. You've got an important meeting coming up here after this. So uh, as we wrap up, I thought I'd throw you a little bit of a curveball here. Uh, have a little fun. I went to uh, one of our fun and favorite uh, running websites, letsrun.com, and I actually put your name in the search function to see how many times <laughs> your name, your full name. Now, I'm sure you've got some nicknames on there too, Kale, but yeah, your full yeah. name, your name pops up on the Let's Run message board, the famous. I mean, they ain't kidding when they call it this thing famous, right? And maybe right. infamous, infamous is the right word. You have somehow, and I'm sure it's like one 
person what would it would troll right that's what we call right, right, yeah. i'm sure it's one person out there but you have become kind of famous for being on the annual coaches um open positions thread do you even know that i don't even know if you even look at this website yeah we we have a lot of fun with it you know i my my uh my people you know my and all those guys they they love to shoot me a screenshot of the latest nonsense you know and it's it's unbelievable uh some of the stuff and you know i don't know what i did to make somebody love me or hate me one but uh, i i did a really good job of it whatever i did <laughs> it's always you know there's not too many like derogatory to, to be frank uh no it's a lot of like you are up for every job it's like you you have it's really weird for a guy who did his undergrad graduate assistant <laughs> assistant coach and head coaching at one school and now now is at a different school so two schools in your whole collegiate career right um let's run you would think you have been at a hundred different schools and applied for a thousand yeah. i mean it is bonkers yeah it's funny i i've i've literally uh just to set the record straight i literally never um i don't think i've ever you know done any of the things that have been on there you know it was up to them yeah i'd I've, I think my wife would not be very happy. We'd have moved a hundred times. Um, but no, we, we, you know, I think it's whatever, you know, I don't, I don't care. I, I, I like, you know, like we talked about on another note earlier, you know, I'm very comfortable with who I am and I have a lot of fun with it. And, you know, I'm just a young coach, man. I tell people all the time, I'm, I'm a throws coach or I'm a, I'm a, sometimes I feel like I'm a throws coach trying to figure out how to be a head coach. And sometimes I feel like I'm a head coach still trying to figure out how to be a throws coach. And I have such a cool situation right now where, I feel like I'm, I'm getting a real good hold on being the director of a program, but now being here and, you know, Mike, Mike Judge is my volunteer assistant and we've got a post-collegiate group and um, I'm getting to learn how to coach throws at such a higher level than I ever have. So I'm going, you know, every day I get to, I get to wake up, I go to the weight room, you know, to check on whatever groups in there in the morning. And then I go to throws practice and I'm working with, you know, working with Mike, I'm working with our, our college kids and it's a blast. We have so much fun. Um, and then I leave there. I go put on my head coaching hat or director hat, whatever you want to call it. And I'm running around, you know, doing errands, doing whatever. And then, you know, at the end of the day, I go to the weight room with the track kids. Throwers are usually finishing up by then. I check in on them. Our head strength coach has our thrower, so I'm super blessed. He's amazing. Great strength coach, Coach Caritzi. And then I go and I watch track. And then if I want to, I can then go watch the post-collegiate or pro guys throw at the end of the day. And um, it's funny, man, I, I put on so many different hats during the day and I'm super blessed to have this job because it's, 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 it's widened my network and, and it's done everything I could have expected it to do. And I'm just super, super thankful for the people that are, you know, that are putting themselves out there and some of them just doing it out of the kindness of their heart to help the program. And, you know, I can't say enough about Mike and, uh, you know, getting to learn from him as a kid and go to his camps and now, He's literally on my staff as a volunteer assistant, and I'm, I'm learning from him now. I mean, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't. Um, you know, I thought I had a pretty good bit of stuff figured out in the throws, and I don't think I'd even scratch the surface, man. So it's, it's just what a, what a luxury I think it is to have, um, not to get too off topic here, but I just think it's, it's such a luxury and such a cool thing for me to have a guy who's out here teaching level two school. He's done, you know, level four, level five, all that good stuff. He's, done, he's been on God knows how many things, you know, for the throws um, to spread his knowledge, him and his brother's knowledge. And, you know, that guy's at my disposal. We talk every single day. Uh, he's one of my best friends. I mean, he's, I don't have a very big circle of friends, you know, that I talk to all the time like that. And he's someone I get to talk to every day now. So can't say enough, you know, good stuff about him. And, you know, it's just fun to kind of become a student of my own, student of my own sport again. And, uh, really relearn some things and it's I think it's working out great and it's it's a lot of fun so yeah whatever gets set on let's run I you know that's too bad I, I we got bigger and better stuff to worry about but it's really really cool and just just so everybody you know kind of understands what goes on here I mean I couldn't tell I couldn't say enough great things about where we're at well let's set the record straight you your wife, uh, your newborn, no one of those in your circle are posting on Let's Run about all this, <laughs> this nonsense. You, you hit the word yeah. nonsense, right? Yeah, we're staying yeah. in Kennesaw, man. We're, we're exactly we're stuff here. I want to, I want to, I want to see it keep getting bigger. 
Well, and you said something really revealing about yourself right there, Kale. Uh, you said sometimes you don't know if are you a head coach that who's learning how to be a throws coach or a throws coach learning how to be a head coach. I think that type of humility is how the greats got to where they are. You know, the uh, you mentioned Mike. Mike and his brother Larry. Um, you think about you know guys that like Mouse that are at the level where they are. Uh, some there's some amazing coaches out there. I can't even begin to name them, but they became that level because they stayed humble. They stayed learning. They stayed asking questions. Stayed. Uh, with their peers and asking them, how do they do this? Why'd you do this? And then taking it to the track and figuring out and failing and getting back up and doing it again. Uh, I think you just really showed your real colors of, you know, it's going to be amazing to see in 10 years as a head coach, how you're doing things then. Cause I think it's only going to get better, man. I, I really do. Your, your posture of servant leader and staying humble is what's going to make the program at Kennesaw and your entire program and family just continue to grow leaps and bounds. Yeah, man. Thank you. It's, I mean, I think this podcast is great, you know, because it's, it's allowed me to listen to, you know, a lot of other people that I really look up to. And I mean, I couldn't, I think I listened to Judd's twice and I don't have the pleasure of, I've only met Judd once and um, I know him and Mike, you know, know each other really well. And we spoke, you know, but we went to a meet a few years ago at South Carolina and uh, I was standing there like, you know, and it, I think this was my first year as a head coach and I had a good group of throwers, but I'm, we, you know, we were throwing it, you know, with Sarge's group and, and uh, South Carolina and Ashland was there and they had their whole crew there. And then there, you know, some other good athletes mixed in. And I mean, that weekend I was looking around and I, I just, I remember saying to myself, like, I thought I had a good group and I did. We had a lot of seniors who had, couple, three, four guys go to the first round meet, you know, really good stuff. Um, but man, we, and we had a good culture cheering for each other, you know, all that fun stuff, Judd talked, bringing that intensity. But then I got to see him bring it down there with his group. And um, I'm like, dude, I can't wait to, to do this. This is what I, you know, and, and so, you know, that's, I think that's the thing I'm most appreciative about is getting to hear those people talk through this and through the vehicle you're creating. And I think it's really it's really, really cool, man, because I know what I saw, and we only get so much time to talk and attract me with a coach and getting to dive into more of, you know, how these people tick and everything. I, you know, I, I'm taking a lot away from those things and these podcasts, so I really appreciate it, man. I'm enjoying them. That means the world to me, honestly. You know, it's all about giving value, and so to hear you have received value, a guy who has achieved so so much in such a short amount of time, you know, we, we said you were head coach at 27. Uh, you're not that old yet. <laughs> You're going to be there one day, Kale. You're going to be there one day. Uh, but so to have a guy like you who has been so successful and, and no doubt will continue to be successful, receive value from what we're pushing out there. And, and again, it's all it's all you guys, the guests, is the, the ones that and everyone has so far just come with an air of humility and humbleness and authenticity. Well, that's how we're going to grow the coaching body and therefore grow the sport together. Yeah, man, absolutely. And you got Diego on here, man. He's big time. <laughs> no, nah, I, I was excited to get to hear his story. I've, I've got to, I got, I was around him a lot too, you know, as a young coach when he was in his, in the Alabama days when he was down there, I, we saw him a lot, you know, being, you know, down in the Sanford, Birmingham area a lot. We always got to run into him and what a cool guy, man. So again, the list goes on and on, I know, but it's just been, it's been really cool getting to get the list of this. So I do appreciate it. And, um, you know, I've enjoyed this. So thank you, man. Absolutely, man. Thank you for joining us. I I, uh, I feel like I know you so much better now. I love it, man. This, I, like I said, it, there's a lot of selfishness around here. I get to learn more about the <laughs> coaches around the, the country. And as a guy who, you know, that was my career was coaching track and field. I just, I hold the people whose profession is coaching track and field at such a high esteem. So anytime that I can, you know, kind of dig in deeper and learn more about them as, as a person, Man, let me tell you what, I get all the value from this. So, Kale, thank you so much for joining us here today on the yeah, Connections man. Podcast. Thanks, man.